Good evening and welcome. Tonight I'm going to be reading to you this book about Jamaica. Let's just dive right in. <laughs> That's where Jamaica is located in the world. An island paradise. Jamaica, land of wood and water, is what Jamaican's original inhabitants, the Taino people, called their island. Sure enough, the mountainous Caribbean island is covered in dense green forest and cut by hundreds of fast-flowing streams. The waters carved deep ravines through the hills and formed stepped cascades. Christopher Columbus, the first European person to set eyes on Jamaica, called it the fairest island that eyes have beheld. As well as forests and waterfalls, Jamaica also has mist-covered mountains and fertile valleys. For centuries, these were the site of coffee and sugar plantations, the source of the island's wealth. Today, the island is also known as a tourist destination thanks to mile upon mile of sandy beaches. Gem of the Caribbean Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean. Covering 4,411 square miles, it is about the same size as the U.S. state of Connecticut. With its long, squashed oval shape, it measures 146 miles long and about 35 miles wide. Jamaica is part of a chain of large Caribbean islands called the Greater Antilles, along with Cuba, Hispaniola, and Puerto Rico. These islands are partly volcanic, but were formed mainly by a collision between two of the immense plates that make up Earth's crust. When the North American and Caribbean plates slowly crashed together about 25 million years ago, the area between them was crumpled upward to form high ground that is now a chain of islands. Jamaica is really the tip of a huge mountain rising from the seafloor. Rugged Landscapes It is said that when the explorer Christopher Columbus was asked to describe Jamaica, he crumpled up a sheet of paper and tossed it on a table. Jamaica is a craggy mass of mountains and plateaus cut by deep valleys. Around half of the island stands more than 1,000 feet above sea level. A spine of mountains runs west to east across Jamaica. In the west is a high plateau pitted with deep hollows called Cockpit Country. To the east lie the John Crow Mountains and the Blue Mountains, which contain the island's highest point, Blue Mountain Peak. Coastal Strip on some parts of Jamaica's coast, the mountains drop steeply to the sea, forming sheer cliffs, such as Lover's Leap on the south coast. However, most of the island's coast is a flat plain. The coastal plain forms a strip that is only 12 miles across at its widest points. Most of the island's towns and cities are found here, including the capital, Kingston. The coastal strip is also the location of much of the island's farming. These lowlands are a patchwork of fields and plantations where bananas, citrus fruits, and sugarcane are grown. Water and Sand Jamaica has more than 120 small rivers. The longest is the Black River. Its lower stretch is smooth enough for boats to travel up and down. However, most other rivers drop too steeply to be navigable. The island's coasts are dotted with beautiful beaches that attract thousands of tourists forming the basis of one of Jamaica's main industries. The beaches of the north and west are covered with fine white sand made from tiny pieces of shell. Parts of the southern coast have black volcanic sand. Some of the most beautiful beaches also have intriguing names. Bluefields Bay, Doctor's Cave, and Treasure Beach. Natural Hazards The first Europeans to see Jamaica compared it to the Garden of Eden. However, Jamaica's beautiful surroundings are always in danger of being ripped apart by natural disasters. The main risk comes from hurricanes. These enormous spinning storms blow in from the Atlantic between June and October, wrecking havoc with roaring winds and lashing rain. In 2004, Hurricane Ivan brought 165 mile per hour winds that wrecked crops and ports. In 2007, Hurricane Dean gave the island another battering. Earthquakes are also a hazard. In 1692, a severe earthquake destroyed the pirate city of Port Royal, 
while in 1907 a quake flattened most of Kingston. A haven for birds. Look at this guy. Like many Caribbean islands, Jamaica is a bird spotter's heaven. Of 250 birds that can be seen on the island, 26 live nowhere else. These include the streamer tail hummingbird. With its dark green shimmering feathers and slender scarlet bill, the species is also known as the doctor bird, perhaps because its long tail feathers resemble the frock coat worn by doctors in the past. The island also has the world's second smallest bird, the tiny vervain, just 2.5 inches long. Another res small resident is the toddy, its plumage of red, gold, and green, the colors of Jamaica's Rastafarian religion, earn it the nickname Rastabird. There are seabirds such as frigate birds. They are called pirates of the skies because they steal food from other birds. Prolific plants. Jamaica is famous for its vast range of plants. Of the 3,000 species growing there, more than a quarter are unique to the island. Scientists describe such species as endemic. There are more than 200 orchids with delicate flowers of all shapes and sizes. Jamaica has 550 different ferns and 60 bromeliads, which root high in the trunks of trees and so are nicknamed air plants. Jamaica's forests, gardens, and hedges are bright with flowers such as spiky heliconia. Many flowers have been introduced by humans. In the same way, only guava, pineapple, and sweet sop are native Jamaican fruits. Sweet sop tastes like custard and is sometimes called the custard apple, even though the fruit is covered in green scales and does not look anything like an apple. Bananas, breadfruit, coconut palms, and citrus trees were all brought either by Europeans or the Taino, the first inhabitants of the island. Aki, a red-cased fruit used in Jamaica's national dish, salt fish and aki, arrived with enslaved people from West Africa. Palm trees such as royal palms and cabbage palms stand out among Jamaica's many trees. So do the silk cotton and the maho with its mottled trunk, the island's national tree. I hope that's how you pronounce it. The delicate blue sprays of the lignum vitae are the national flower. The tree's name means wood of life because of the many medicines obtained from its bark. Rabbit-sized rodents. Strolling through Jamaica's forests at dusk, you might glimpse a shy rabbit-sized mammal, the Jamaican coney or hutia is one of many animal species that are unique to the island. Just how the Hutia came to live on Jamaica is an amazing story, for its ancestors must have arrived either by swimming or by drifting on floating vegetation. The Hutia is now rare because it is hunted by a predator that is fairly new to Jamaica, the mongoose. This hunter was brought to the island in the 1870s to kill rats. However, the mongoose also turned to hunting hutias and stealing the eggs of birds and reptiles. Big butterflies. The highlands of Jamaica are home to the Homer swallowtail, the largest butterfly in the Americas. With a wingspan measuring six inches across, this insect is bigger than several of the island's birds. The swallowtail is an example of a form of evolution quite common on islands called gigantism. Like the Jamaican iguana, the butterflies have evolved to a large size, probably to take advantage of food sources. With their black and yellow markings, these butterflies are very rare, partly because so many have been caught by specimen hunters. They are now protected by law. Coastal Kingdoms Jamaica's coastal habitats include mangrove forests, whose trees live halfway between land and water. The tangled roots of mangrove trees stick out of the mud, sheltering fish and shellfish such as crabs. The swamps of the southern coasts are home to crocodiles and West Indian manatees. These large, gentle mammals, also known as sea cows, are very scarce because they are widely hunted for meat. Hawksbill and loggerhead turtles nest on remote beaches and offshore islands called keys. The coral reefs that fringe the shores are home to a variety of marine life. Large predatory fish such as tuna, marlin, nurse sharks, and the dreaded barracuda patrol the deep waters of the ocean side of the reefs. Bird paradise. Jamaica is also rich in bird life. 
It is home to nearly 30 endemic kinds of birds, some of which only live in particular parts of the island. Visitors come from around the world to try to catch sight of endemic species, such as the orange quid and Jamaican oriole. This is the harassed bird. The fight for freedom. There's Sam Sharp. In the port of Montego Bay stands a reminder of Jamaica's past, Sam Sharp Square. For 300 years, the island's wealth came from slave labor. Under Spanish and then English rule, African slaves were harshly treated. At Christmas 1831, a slave from Montego Bay named Sam Sharp led an uprising. Across Jamaica, 200,000 slaves rebelled, burning estates and planters' houses. The English army put down the Christmas rebellion with great force. Sharp and 500 of his supporters were hanged in Montego Bay city square. However, Britain people were sickened by the brutality, and before the decade was out, slavery was abolished. Today, Sam Sharp is a national hero. His statue stands in the square where he died, renamed in his honor. A Spanish Colony As far as we know, nobody lived on Jamaica until the mid-7th century, when people called the Taino arrived. Some experts think the Taino were Arawaks, members of an ethnic group from South America. Since I was looking at the statue, it's so cool, it's a bird. Anyway, the first European settlers were Spaniards who arrived about 850 years later. Like other pioneers of the time, many of the immigrants were looking for treasure and hoping to get rich quick. The Spanish found no riches, but Jamaica became a valuable supply base for ships, making the journey between Europe and Spain's empire in South America. The Spanish community also began to farm bananas and sugarcane. They enslaved the Taino, who began to die in large numbers from overwork and diseases introduced from Europe. The Spaniards imported hired workers from home and also forced Africans to work as slaves. England takes over. The British were jealous of Spain's wealthy colonies in the Caribbean. In 1654, the British leader Oliver Cromwell sent a fleet of ships to capture territory in the region. In 1655, the British seized Jamaica. Spanish attempts to retake the island failed, and in 1670, the territory was officially handed to England as part of a peace deal with Spain. However, a few pockets of resistance remained. Groups of former slaves who became known as Maroons had set up bases in the mountains. For the next 150 years, these rebels held out against the English, defying repeated attempts to defeat them. The early part of British rule over Jamaica was a period of lawlessness. Pirates controlled Jamaica's biggest port, Port Royal, and pillaged and plundered across the Caribbean. During the 18th century, the island settled down and grew into one of the most prosperous colonies in the region. The source of the wealth was sugar cane. Coffee drinking was in fashion in Europe, which made sugar such a valuable crop that it was called white gold. Thousands of new settlers arrived from Britain, lured by the chance of making a fortune. And between 1673 and 1740, the number of plantations increased from 57 to 430. A huge workforce was needed to run the plantations, and so, like the Spanish, the British imported Africans to work as slaves slave trade. By the late 1700s, Jamaica had become one of the largest slave markets in the Western Hemisphere. Slave ships made up th a three-step voyage between Europe, West Africa, and Jamaica, or other places in the Americas. This was known as the Triangular Trade. On the Middle Passage, the part of the voyage between Africa and America, newly captured slaves were chained below deck in cramped conditions without sanitation or enough food. About one in five slaves died during the two-month crossing. Those that survived were sold at market to the highest bidder. Most Jamaican planters forced their slaves to work very hard. The slaves usually died after only a few years in the plantations. The landowners could replace slaves easily and did not need to ensure they were healthy. Between 1700 and 1807, 600,000 African slaves were brought to Jamaica. Slave Rebellions as a reaction to their harsh treatment, slaves often started rebellions. In 1690, a group of runaway slaves joined the Maroons in the Highlands and began an attack on the English known as the First Maroon War. 
The Maroons made guerrilla-style attacks on the English for nearly 40 years before the British made peace with the rebels. The peace treaty gave the Maroons 1,500 acres of wild country for their own. In return, they agreed to help the British recapture runaway slaves and to put down any future rebellions. When a former African chief named Tacky led a major slave uprising in 1760, the Maroons fought against the rebels. The truce between the Maroons and the British lasted about 50 years, but in 1795, a second war was sparked by the public flogging of two Maroons. This time, the English brought in bloodhounds to pursue the rebel fighters through the hills. Eventually, the Maroons were forced to surrender. The End of Slavery During the late 1700s, the anti-slavery movement gathered strength in Britain and the Americas. In 1807, it became legal to capture new slaves and sell them anywhere in the British Empire. However, slaves already working in British colonies were not freed. In 1831, the violent defeat of the Christmas Rebellion led by Sam Sharp gave a final boost to the anti-slavery movement. In 1838, all Jamaican slaves were freed. The British government paid 20 million pounds, worth about 370 million dollars today, to plantation owners to pay for the loss of their workers. Troubled times. Over the next several decades, life remained hard for the freed slaves. Some were able to rent plots of land and set up free villages, but many had to work in the plantations for low pay. In 1846, the sugar industry was damaged when Britain raised taxes on Jamaican sugar being imported to Britain. Jamaican sugar had previously benefited from low taxes. Now it cost the same as sugar imported from other countries. In 1865, tensions between African Jamaicans and those of European descent erupted in a revolt called the Morant Bay Rebellion. Rebels led by Paul Bogle marched on the courthouse in Morant Bay. When the police opened fire, a riot broke out. Bogle and 430 rebels were executed, and thousands of people were flogged. The British government was shocked by the violence. It had largely left Jamaica to run itself, but now it decided to rule the island from London independence at last. In the early 20th century, Jamaicans had begun to press for independence from Britain. In 1938, after many riots and protests, a labor leader named Alexander Bustamante founded the first trade union in the Caribbean. Bustamante's cousin, Norman Manley, founded a political party called the People's National Party, or PNP, which was linked to the union. In 1943, Bustamante broke away from the PNP and formed a new party, the Jamaican Labour Party, or JLP. These two parties have dominated Jamaican politics ever since. During World War II, Jamaicans fought on the side of Britain and its ally, the United States. Jamaican leaders continued to ask for independence. In 1944, Jamaica formed its own parliament. The JLP won the first election. In 1959, Jamaica became self-governing, with Norman Manley as Prime Minister. In 1962, Jamaica finally gained full independence, and Alexander Bustamante became Prime Minister. Racket in music. Bob Marley. Reggae, or ragged music, is perhaps Jamaica's best-known export. Today, it is a truly international music musical style. Its rhythms and bass lines influence musicians across the world. The sounds emerged in Jamaica in the 1950s, born of the musical styles mento, ska, and rocksteady. The name came later, from a 1968 song by Toots and the Maytals named Do the Reggae. The roll call of Jamaica's reggae stars includes Desmond Decker, Jimmy Cliff, Peter Tosh, and Burning Spear. The most famous star of all was Bob Marley, backed by his group, The Wailers. Marley sang about the hardships and injustices of ghetto life. Marley is loved across Jamaica, but today you are more likely to hear dancehall music, the latest offshoot of reggae. Extending the family Jamaican families are sometimes organized in a different way from those in many other parts of the world. In addition to families with two parents and their children, there are also large extended families in which grandparents or other relatives help to look after several children. Single-parent families are also common, usually made up of a mother raising children. It is not uncommon for Jamaican women to bring up children on their own or with the help of their family before marrying. Some parents leave their children in the care of a relative or guardian 
while they go to work abroad. All children receive six years of free schooling between the ages of five and eleven. Before that, most attend nursery school. At ten or eleven, pupils take an exam. The results are used to decide which type of secondary school they will go on to. About two-thirds of the pupils spend another five years in high school. The school day lasts from 8 a.m. to at least 3 p.m. with about 30 students to a class. Students may then go on to study at one of Jamaica's universities or colleges. These schools charge fees, but there are scholarships available. Island Art Jamaica's had a strong tradition of sculpture since the Taino. The most famous sculptor of recent times was Edna Manley, who was the wife of Jamaica's first Prime Minister, Norman Manley. Painter Colin Garland and potter Cecil Bogg was also well known. One of the best places to see Jamaican art is at the National Gallery in Kingston. The Jamaican Festival held every summer is a great opportunity to get acquainted with Jamaican arts, music, and dance. Many styles of dancing in Jamaica, such as meal, revival, and quadrille, blend African and European influences. Jamaican modern dance is influenced by all of these and also by classical ballet and European modern dance. The country's best-known dance troupe is the National Dance Theatre Company. Jamaican Sounds Music is the lifeblood of Jamaica. You hear it pulse around almost every corner. African drum rhythms have had a big influence on reggae, dancehall, ska, mento, dub, and other Jamaican styles that are popular all over the world. Reggae is the best known style of all. It developed in the 1960s in working class parts of Jamaica. In the early 1970s, it reached an international audience for the first time through the movie The Harder They Come, which starred Jamaican musician Jimmy Cliff. The biggest reggae star, Bob Marley, had many international hits. He died from cancer in 1981, but his music remains very popular. Jamaica's biggest reggae festival is Reggae Sumfest, held in Montego Bay in July. Reggae, and more recently dance hall, is also played at mobile discos, often outdoors, called sound stages. In the late 1970s, sound stages were imported to the United States. They became an important part of the emergence of hip-hop culture. Taking it easy. Jamaica has a sociable culture. In their free time, Jamaicans often get together to enjoy themselves. The warm, sunny climate means that a lot of life goes on outdoors. With Jamaica's beautiful beaches, it is no surprise that fishing is a popular pastime. Many people just hang out on the porch with friends and family, catching up on the latest gossip. The more energetic play soccer, cricket, or basketball on any patch of open ground. Older people and some youngsters play dominoes or drafts and checkers. Speed and skill. Jamaicans are passionate about sports. Soccer, cricket, basketball, and netball, a game a little like basketball, are all favorites. In 1998, there were great celebrations when the national soccer team, the Reggae Boys, reached the finals of the World Cup for the first time. Jamaicans also represent their country at cricket, but as members of the West Indies team, which includes players from across the Caribbean. There is high excitement among cricket fans when arch-rival England comes to play the West Indies in a test match at Jamaica's main cricket pitch, Sabina Park in Kingston. The West Indies dominated world cricket in the 1980s, and the sport used to be Jamaica's favorite. Today, however, many boys and girls prefer to play basketball or soccer, and Jamaica is no longer a leading cricket nation. The Jamaican women's netball team ranks among the best in the world. Jamaica has produced a long line of sprint champions, including Asafa Powell, who broke the men's 100-meter record in 2007. <laughs> Same bold, anyway. Jamaica has one of the highest proportions of Olympic medal winners for its population in the world. Most Jamaican success in sports comes from athletics. Eating in Jamaica. Jamaican cooking is a delicious blend of African, Chinese, Indian, and European styles. Jamaicans like their food spicy, with plenty of garlic, chili, chili pepper, and allspice, which comes from pimento. The national dish, salt fish and ackee, is made with salted cod and ackee, a fruit that looks and tastes a lot like scrambled eggs when it is cooked. Salt fish and ackee is eaten for breakfast and also on Sundays, along with yams, dumplings, and plantains, which are similar to bananas. Most other meals are eaten with rice and peas, seasoned with onions and coconut milk. 
Jamaica is famous for a dish called jerk meat. This is pork, chicken, or fish soaked in herbs and spices, and then cooked over a fire of pimento wood until it is bursting with flavor. Chinese and Indian dishes, such as curried goat, are also popular. Other Jamaican recipes have mysterious names. Rundown is fish cooked in coconut, while Stamp and Go is a fried fish pancake. To finish up, there is always a wide range of juicy and colorful tropical fruits. A spiritual side. Most people in Jamaica follow some form of religion. About 62% are Christians. Of these, most are Protestants, including Baptists, Seventh-day Adventists, Pentecostalists, Anglicans, and a group called the Church of God. About 100,000 Jamaicans are Rastafarians, a faith closely linked with Christianity. Jamaica is believed to have more churches per square mile than any other country. Most people attend church on Sunday and many children go to Sunday school. Jamaican services are lively with singing and clapping. About 35% of the population follow non-Christian faiths, which include Hinduism, Judaism, and Islam. This group also includes many Jamaicans who follow homegrown faiths that have African roots, such as Kumina and Pokomania. A city by the sea. Kingston is one of the largest, most lively cities in the Caribbean. The capital of Jamaican culture, as well as the center of its government, it pulses to reggae music night and day. With a fine natural harbor and backed by the Blue Mountains, modern Kingston sprawls over the coastal plain. It is really several cities in one. The downtown area by the shore is the oldest district, with wharves and markets lining the waterfront. Colonial buildings here include several theaters and concert halls. To the north, leafy New Kingston is the business district. The city is ringed by crowded slum areas such as Trenchtown and Jonestown, where crime is never far away. Jamaica as a whole has the same contrasts. Great natural beauty, but also widespread poverty. Going it alone. Jamaica is one of the oldest democracies in the Caribbean. Violence has sometimes flared at election times, but calm usually returns when results are announced. Since independence in 1962, two parties have dominated Jamaican politics. The People's National Party, or PNP, describes itself as a democratic socialist party. The Jamaican Labor Party, or JLP, is a pro-business party. In 1972, the PNP, which was then led by Michael Manley, son of its founder Norman Manley, took power. Michael Manley has a background in labor politics and was committed to improving conditions for all Jamaicans. His government increased spending on health and education. However, Manley also tried to distance Jamaica from the United States, and this discouraged foreign companies from investing in the island. By the late 1970s, the country had severe economic problems. Changing leaders. In 1980, the JLP, led by Edward Siaga, was swept into power. Sayanga immediately restored friendly relations with the United States and began to rebuild the economy. Business started to pick up. In 1989, Michael Manley returned to power, but his political ideas were now very different. His government continued the pro-business policies of the JLP and good relations with the United States. The PNP held on to power right through the 1990s and into the 21st century. When Manley retired in 1992, Jamaica elected its first black prime minister, J.P. P. J. Patterson, excuse me. In 2006, Portia Simpson Miller took over the leadership of the PNP, becoming Jamaica's first woman prime minister. However, in 2007, the PNP's long 18-year reign was ended by the JLP under a new leader, Bruce Golding. Old Trades, New Businesses. Jamaica's economy is still recovering from problems that followed independence. Agriculture is one of the main industries, but mining and tourism have now been added to the list. About a fifth of Jamaica's workers are involved in farming, forestry, or fishing. The most important crop is still sugarcane, but Jamaica also produces bananas, citrus fruits, ackee, coconut, pimento, coffee, cacao, and yams. Jamaican farms rear chickens and goats for meat and cattle for both meat and milk. The main breed of cattle, called Jamaica Hope, yields more milk than other breeds found in similarly warm places. 
Jamaica also exports fish and shellfish. However, the country is not able to grow all of its own food, and so has to import some from abroad. Digging it. Mining is very important to Jamaica's economy. The country is a leading producer of the mineral bauxite, which is used to make aluminum. The sale of bauxite provides about half of all Jamaica's export earnings. Gypsum is also mined in Jamaica. The country has few energy sources, and so it relies on buying fuel from other countries. Jamaican factories produce cement, chemicals, clothes, and machinery. Dream Destination Tourism is one of Jamaica's key sources of income. Every year, about one million tourists visit the island. Most of the visitors are wealthy people from Europe and North America. Tourism is well developed. Many people associate Jamaica with lazy beach vacations, but there is a huge amount for visitors to do. At leading resorts such as Montego Bay, Negril, and Ocho Rios, they can skim over the sea in a sailboat or sailboard. People can explore the beautiful coral reefs by snorkeling or scuba diving, or head out to sea to try their luck at sport fishing. Jamaica's tourist attractions are not all on the coast. Inland visitors go rafting on the rivers and take a dip at a waterfall or other scenic area. Taking horseback rides into the Blue Mountains is another popular activity. Resorts have golf courses, tennis courts, and many other sporting facilities. Some tourists like to explore Jamaica's historic towns, pirate haunts, and plantations. The tourist industry is a major employer, with thousands of Jamaicans working in hotels or as guides. Getting around Most people use buses to move around Jamaica. The country has good roads, but not many cars outside of the cities. In Kingston, however, traffic congestion has recently become a major problem. Buses are frequent, but can get very crowded at busy times. People also use minibuses and taxis. Whatever the vehicle driving is often slow going. Country and even city roads are sometimes blocked by herds of goats or a line of donkey carts. A railroad links the towns of Kingston, Montego Bay, and Port Antonio. Kingston and Montego Bay have international airports, and there are many local airports. The national airline Air Jamaica has been operating since 1968. Future Shocks Jamaica's economy is doing well when compared with many Caribbean countries. In the future, natural resources such as bauxite and bananas will continue to bring prosperity. Tourism is now the island's major industry. The sunny climate and beautiful scenery will continue to draw tourists from all over the world. However, the country does have some problems. Prices are rising fast, and there are not enough jobs for everyone. During the 1980s and 1990s, Jamaica borrowed huge sums of money from the World Bank to develop industry and improve public services such as transportation, schools, and hospitals. This has left the country with huge debts. The government now has to spend much of the income it earns from exports to pay off the interest that is due on these loans. That leaves less money to spend to help solve problems. On the other hand, the economy is boosted by funds called remittances sent home by Jamaicans living and working abroad. Crime is another problem. Theft is quite commonplace, especially in the cities. Crime is fueled by the large difference between the living conditions of rich and poor Jamaicans. In slums or ghettos, tensions sometimes spill over into violence. As a result, Jamaica has one of the highest murder rates in the world. In recent years, the authorities have had some success in cracking down on crime, especially in resorts, where they fear it will harm the tourist industry. New Ideas Jamaica is aiming to develop new manufacturing and service industries such as banking so that it does not have to rely too heavily on tourism. Jamaican leaders are strengthening trade links with other Caribbean nations in the hope that they can work together to compete with other regions. Whatever the future brings, Jamaicans can continue to take pride in their vibrant culture and beautiful land. And that's the end for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good,